the 16th of June 1915, a battle took place near Ypres in Belgium at a location called Bellewarde, which you'd be forgiven for being entirely unaware of. I'm not, I'm not talking about the Marne or the Somme, these huge battles that, that go down in history and are well documented and well marked. Indeed, this little conflict can be considered, as it was at the time, to an extent, a diversion for a, a larger battle taking place to the south near Givenchy. And indeed, it was an exercise in straightening out the line. Let me tell you more about it. And let's introduce some passion here, because albeit this is not a monumental element of the Great War, for me it's a microcosm of these hugely important battles. I'll tell you more. Following the Second Battle of Ypres, Germans held elevated ground to the east of Ypres. This was a bulge in the line. Elevated and a bulge is bad news for the British Army and its allies. So we need to take this ground. The Ard Infantry Division, five corps, were assigned the objective of taking this area at Belleward and Hook. You may have heard of the, the Hook Crater Museum. This objective was to be taken in three stages. First objective, take German front lines. Move on from there and take a road between the Menin Road and Bellewarde Farm itself. Moving on to the third objective, take the high ground in front of Bellewarde Lake. Now, these three stages would be preceded by artillery barrages. Okay, the artillery behind our front lines would rain down shrapnel, explosives, high explosives on the German lines, essentially softening them up for the infantry assault. Okay, now, after a barrage that took place in the small hours of the morning, the infantry assault took place. Two hours of barrage and then the infantry set off. First objectives taken within about 15 minutes. But after that, it becomes a lot less. Easy is not the right word, but that's the one I'm using. Because the fog of war, the, the, the smoke created by this artillery barrage, makes it difficult for the artillery spotters to identify our own troops. So while the barrage is to move on to each objective in advance of our infantry, there's confusion, and the sad truth is our infantry, many of them fall to what we would call today friendly fire. Now further to this, of course, the Germans counter attack, and it becomes very, very bloody and very muddled. Individual elements take their objective, some actually reach the lake the final objective. Others are, 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 are annihilated. Now, it gets worse. Our artillery ultimately runs out of essentially its quota of ammunition. However, the German artillery diverts its attention from the, from the Ypres salient and Ypres itself to Bellewarde in this battle. Ultimately, within half a day, it's decided that we should retreat to the first objective, that German front line, taken within 15 minutes. And that's, that's the end of the battle. So why am I telling you about this? Because this is just, as I say, a microcosm of the, the war in France and Flanders. Well, let's, let's just look at the, the impact of this little battle. A thousand British dead on the day. Ultimately, many more would die of wounds and infection, and total casualties approach 4,000. Some regiments lose up to 75% of their contingent. It's horrific. 
Okay, so again, why? Why am I telling you about this? Well, Martin Clift had a great uncle who was lost at Bellowarda. And that great uncle, like so many, has no known grave. He's commemorated as all such are at the Menin Gate, but there's no known grave. And Martin decided he would like to, more than like to, it became a passion, and I share that passion, to commemorate these men. And th this moves me, because after, this is, we're a hundred years after the event. There are countless war graves and memorials. Why another one now, and why for this little campaign? Well, precisely for that reason, because the question should be naturally, yeah, but why? We should do something, because the last of those that served have passed away. And the Great War could be consigned to memoirs, history books, black and white film, and be taught in schools, but be relegated to history. There's no real link to this anymore. I think the fact that there's now a, a real body round and about Martin that want to do this, that tap into that, that, that passion, we have relatives, we know of people, we can empathise. There were Scots, there were Irish and English, and of course there were Germans killed at this little battle. And for, for a whole multitude of reasons, there's a, there's a really growing nucleus of people that want to erect a memorial. This, when we do it, will stand, in my opinion, as testimony to the enduring import of this conflict and that, that we should commemorate and celebrate the sacrifice. Because in a hundred years' time, this question, why again, I can see people saying, why a hundred years after the event did they decide to erect this memorial? Do you know, it meant so much a hundred years on. Maybe it should mean something to us now, and it will. We know it will. Now, what, what, what do we want to do? Well, uh, a commissioned, a unique, specially commissioned bronze statue is, is, is being, has been modelled. Um, we're, we're at this stage, we're, we're, we're raising the funds to, to, to commission the, 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 the founding, the casting of this bronze. It will depict both British and German soldiers. Because at this stage, we need to remember the sacrifice, but celebrate the coming together, the reconciliation. Because we've moved on. This isn't 1920. We defeated the Germans. This is 2014, 2015, the centenary next year. And we, we now see the, the, the big picture, the sacrifice on either side. And indeed, wars will go on. In that hundred years, we've seen a world war. They're still fighting today. We need to show that we remember the sacrifice and we, we embrace reconciliation between peoples. Now, I'm talking to you because we need your help. And I, I hope I can stir some passion in you to support this cause. Visit the website, learn more about the battle, buy the book, a fantastic history has just been published. All royalties go towards this memorial appeal. Uh, the DVD, the documentary history, Look at it, enjoy, and contribute, support this way. Now, whether you are a, potentially a corporate sponsor or an individual like myself, I implore you, do what you can. Visit the website, make a little contribution, because together we can raise the £20,000 that we need to erect this memorial. We have been given the location, the land, by the Hoof Crater Museum. The Belgian authorities at Ape are fully behind this. This is, this is a really good cause, extremely worthwhile. Help us and demonstrate for posterity that 100 years on, this isn't history, this is, this is important. Do what you can.